when making any type of character in Blender, the first thing I like to do is just to get the basic shape down, just literally blocking out their shape with blocks. Also, it's always good to have a reference before starting. I don't know why, but I find it really hard to make things without one. I always seem to get the proportions off or just forget exactly how things should look. Also, if you're making a reference for a character, try to draw them from a flat, forward view, or like a sideways perspective. I didn't have a very good reference for this character, Chocolate, but since I knew them very well, I didn't think I really needed one. I also find it helpful to have the arms and legs as a separate model, and then use a mirror modifier on them. That way I can avoid having to model everything twice. I also add a subsurface modifier to get some actual detail down. You can also use a shift E to change how much the subsurface modifier affects that part of the mesh. Once I'm happy with the general shape, I then add the subsurface modifier and start working on the actual detail. Ideally, this is where you'd be trying to get it to look as close as possible to your reference making sure to zoom out and look at all the different angles and stuff. Since my reference is not the best, I'm kind of just eyeing the proportions. Also, since my character here is quite simple, I find it better to have the limbs be detached, but if you're making a more realistic character with more of a transition between the arms and legs, like a real human or something, then you'd probably just want to extrude out from the body and just kind of make the whole mesh be attached. That way you can get a more realistic movement when animating. After finally getting the proportions right, I then move on to the material. For this, I just used the basic principled BSDF node, then I created a new image and attached it to the base color. Okay, now it's time to paint on that image we just made. Making the UV for painting can be quite tricky with some characters. With chocolate, since he doesn't have much to him, and is pretty much all one color, I just used the project from view when unwrapping. I then started painting on that image I made. After getting down the base color, I then added some dark areas around the arms and legs. I find the gradients can make things look really good, so I recommend just trying to add some wherever you can. Even with just basic lighter and darker gradients, they can really make things look a lot nicer. For the bow tie, I also used projection view, and then just moved it away from the body as to not accidentally color the rest. If you're having trouble unwrapping things correctly, I recommend going through all the different options. Even if they don't seem like they'd work, just experiment with them because I've used all of them many times. Specifically the Smart UV Unwrap. I think this is the best option for a really complicated mesh. Once that's done, it's now time to move on to the face. I went over more on how to do that in other videos, so I'll just go over quickly what I do. Basically, I just made a new material and added an image node with the eye texture on it. I then selected the part of the mesh where I wanted the eyes to be, then duplicated it and moved it out a very tiny amount. After that, I then unwrapped it the same way I did with the body. For EV, you need to plug the alpha of the image into the alpha of the principal BSDF. And if you don't want the eyes to have any lighting on them, just plug the base color into the emission. At this point, the model is pretty much done, so now let's move on to the rig. For this, I just add an armature, and then use Shift A to add more bones, and move them to what seems right. Also, I'm only making one side of the character because I'm going to mirror later on. It's a lot better to do it this way. I also changed the type of bone to B bone in the armature settings, just because I like the way it looks better. You can also use Control A to change the size of them. Also, try to name the bones correctly because that'll be helpful later on. After that, I then add the bones to be used as poles for inverse kinematics. Make sure that these bones are not attached to the rest of the mesh as they will cause problems. Now, select the last bone that's on whatever limb you want to move. For me, it's this bone. Then, add the inverse kinematics modifier. For the target, just use the armature. And for the bone, select the foot pole, which is this one that's not attached to anything at the very bottom. Now, for some cases, this might be fine enough, but for something like an arm, you'll want to have another pole, the leg pole. So in this box, choose the leg pole. You also probably need to change the pole angle until it moves correctly. I sometimes have trouble with this, 
as if the bones are not completely straight, I find it doesn't always bend correctly. So if you're having trouble with that, try angling them a bit. You also want to increase the chain length to however many bones are in that limb. For my character, it's only two. After doing the same thing for the arm, I then select the parts I want to mirror. I then mirrored them based on the three cursors position, which was in the center of my character. Alright, now select your mesh, or meshes in this case, and then armature, and parent them together with Control P. I prefer to manually add the weights, so choose empty groups. After this, it's time for the weight painting. I'd recommend turning on vertex groups for this in viewport overlays. Now, this is why it's good to name your bones, because you have to select a part of that mesh, then choose which bone to assign it to. It can take a bit of time to do it this way, but it's necessary for stylized characters like this. For something more realistic, you might want to use automatic weights, but I find it just doesn't assign the weights correctly sometimes. I'd also recommend trying to not just have full weights on some, but kind of add half weights. So like, turn the weight strength down to halfway, and then add some strength there. You can also use weight painting to add some transitions. It's just good to do this to avoid things looking jaggedy when you move them. Also, once you're done painting, you can then add the mirror modifier. To make things look a bit nicer, you can press M on some bones, and then move them to another layer so that they don't get in the way when animating. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Now, if you find some things look a bit jaggedy when you move them, you probably either need to add more subdivisions in that mesh, or just need to smooth out the transition of the blend weight. Also, when assigning weights, the bone's name will be the same as the vertex group. So if you rename a bone, then that vertex group won't work unless you also call it that same thing. This always messes me up when I'm trying to edit a rig, so make sure to name everything correctly before. There's also the rigify add-on, which you can turn on by going into settings, then add-ons. This can just help save a bit of time. You can also change the way bones look, which is helpful when animating. But other than that, I think that's pretty much everything.